Carolina. I'm about to drop off a load of shingles. Drop this off. Then I'm gonna turn around. Then head to Columbia. Pick up a load of pipes. You already know where they're going. Approaching destination at 0 0.2 miles on the right side. I hate these destinations like this. It's on the, on the main highway through a city. You don't know exactly where to turn in at. So you gotta slow down and take it easy. But it looks like I'm gonna turn in right here. You have arrived at your destination on the right side, 688. On the right side, 688. I don't see it. I'm gonna turn in here. Turn around in this place. Let's see, man. Let's see where. Oh, this is it. Tree brand packaging. GAF quality roofing products. I don't see where the shingles is at. Let's see. Two different gates. I'm not sure which one I need to go down. Tree brand packaging. Go to, go to the end of the building. Go to the second gate. Office on your right. I'm not going there. I'm going to Mid Atlantic Roofing Supply. It's a pickup truck coming out. We about to ask them. Ask Mr. Pickup Truck. I bet you I need to go to the right. other gate. We got enough room. We got enough room to turn around. I don't think this. Oh, here we go. It ain't that gate. Check in now. So I gotta pull straight up and back in right there. Ain't nothing like two forklifts. In 400 feet, 
make a U-turn if possible. Nothing like two four lifts. You heard my GPS talking about make a U-turn if possible. She don't know no better. But we about to hop out on this highway real quick and get this thing on the road. Time, time to put the hammer down. I didn't even take a 30 minute break. I got three hours, 20 minutes on my clock. I got two hours, nine minutes till I get to uh, Columbia. I just passed 77 coming up here. So my GPS is telling me to go down, make a U-turn, come back this way to the right and go towards it and get on 285. But I already looked at the route. I'm gonna take 77 all the way to Columbia. Man, if I can get back on the road, if I was in the car, I'd hop in that turn lane and then ease my way back to that right lane. But we ain't in no car, so we ain't gonna do it like that. But we about to get it though, man. We about to get it. Flatbed game, we about to get it. Hey, drop them snowmans down there, man. Drop the snowmans. We about to put the hammer down on this thing. Damn, Flam Dog. Hey, run that shit up, Chase. Sesame, open sesame. I can open any gate at any ship or receiver by saying those two words. Open sesame. Oh, I always forget about that speed bump. Always forget about it. Oh man. Straight ahead. Where that tra those three trailers at. And you got one trailer with four pipes. That's where I gotta drop my trailer. That's a tight squeeze. Let's see if we can do this. I'm trying to think of the easiest way to get in there. It seems like the easiest way right here. Let's see if I can get this thing in there. I think I can do it. I think I can, I think I can. I think I can, I think I can. I 
think I can, I think I can. I think I can, I think I can. Ah. Those damn yard dogs, they get in these tight ass spots. But guess who used to be a yard dog driver? Back in the old days. Yes, me. When I used to work at the vegetable plant, called Allen Cannon. Used to have to move these trailers with sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes, Carrots, squash, string beans. Used to do that quite often. We had a big ass rake. Back the truck up into the bay. Had a big rake that goes in the back of the truck and pull the string beans or the collards or the spinach and pulls them out. Every now and then we get a truck in. They got a the, the trailer have a floor on it that shakes. Like, you don't got to put the rake in the back of that truck. The whole floor, hit a button, motherfucker shake. And uh, it pushes the damn vegetables out the back of the truck. We, we used to call them creepers. Not sure what they call them. But uh, maybe some maybe some of y'all know. Maybe some of y'all know what kind of trailers those are. Put vegetables on them. And uh, when we did the, the carrots and sweet potatoes, we did it two different ways. They have dump trailers that come and dump all the damn sweet potatoes on the ground. And then I used to drive the Bobcat too. I, 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 they, they had guys bring those dump trailers in. They, they dumped all the damn sweet potatoes. You see all them pipes in front of me? Like those pipes, it'd be like mountains of damn sweet potatoes. Like taller than that damn little trailer. Tall ass mountains of sweet potatoes. And uh, get the Bobcat, go pick up the Bobcat. Pick the, use the bobcat, pick the sweet potatoes up, and dump them in the hopper. And the hopper takes them inside the plant where they cut them up and whatever. And we also had another way that was easier. They put the whole damn trailer at the truck driver. The truck driver got to get out the truck. But most of the time, they they drop the trailer and they go leave. And, and they and we had another thing that we had to back the trucks up in, and it picks the whole damn trailer up in the air. Like you about to shoot the motherfucker off in space. We had that thing too. That was years ago when I was young. I used to work at a vegetable plant called Allen Cannon. Headquarters in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. But my grandma actually retired from this place. Now the headquarters was in Arkansas, but in my town, Clinton, North Carolina, there's a little town outside of Clinton called Turkey on Highway 24, in between Clinton and Warsaw. That's where the plant was at. It's closed down now. But my grandma retired from there, but I worked there too as well. I worked there for a little while before I went to uh, Smithfield Packing, where I was uh, processing pork. But I like Smithfield Packing better than Allen Cannon. Cause one thing about Allen Cannon, dealing with vegetables, it's fucking hot as hell, always hot. But luckily, I worked on second shift, at six, six at night to six in the morning. So I didn't deal with the heat as much as first shift. Let me get out and secure this load.
Hello? Fucking warranty calls. Got no fucking vehicle warranty. Left to leave. Always remember that about the landing gear. You go left to leave. They had this trailer pretty, pretty low to the ground. So it's already, the landing gear is already off the ground since I hooked up to it. That lady told me to pull up throw my straps up there but little do she know I got to take a 30 minute break so I'm throwing my straps back here I'm throwing them back here we're gonna put two in the first five feet then we're gonna put about Say we're gonna put three in the middle, three in the middle, two on the back. I'm gonna see if they got another one. A little bit further up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, cause that one's a little too far back right there. We're gonna use this one. Throw it over the top. Should have pulled out a little bit because I ain't got a lot of room up in here. I'm about to show y'all something that's unacceptable for PNS. That ain't how they train us over here. I'm about to show you as soon as I throw this. Yeah, maybe I should have pulled out. Maybe I should have pulled out. <laughs> Check this out. PNS does uh what's the word for it? That's not acceptable at PNS on the rub rail. We gotta run it under the trailer. It looks like they got, yep, they got this one the same way. Unacceptable at PNS. That ain't how we do it over here. And some guys roll like that, but I ain't gonna roll with it. Cause if something was to happen, something was to happen, and they find they they were like, well, you didn't have it secured properly. Cause the rub rail is weak. We gotta put ours up under here. Under the under the rub rail. So I gotta unloosen this one and the one on the back. This takes to me. Must be important. What the hell is this? My, my buddy Tevin. 
Shout out my dog, Tevin. in the middle. Let's figure out which three we're going to use. Unacceptable. Under the rug, rug.
I finish. If you want to know why PNS policy is not to hook it on the rub rail, you have to talk with the safety man. I can't give you the exact exact answer, but I believe it's got something to do with the, uh, this rub rail. I think it's I think it's aluminum. I think it ain't strong enough to hold. Type of trailers that they use. It's the type of trailers they use, but it's not. It's not designed to hold it. Something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Veteran PNS drivers. See that dunnage? I gotta move that over here. All the straps is up there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got seven straps. I'm about to tighten these up. This strap right here ain't no good. So I will be taking that off. I'm gonna tighten it up for now. I ain't got nowhere to throw it away at. Tighten these up. Tighten all these up. Move that dunnage. By the time I do that, it's gonna be time to head up there and get my paperwork. All right, I'm out. That's all y'all gonna see for now. Pretty sure many of y'all have heard this question before. How many times have y'all heard this question? When, when people find out that you're a truck driver, how many times has somebody asked you, where, where do y'all sleep at? And you be like, I sleep in my truck. I got a bed in it. They be like, I got a bed in it? You be like, yeah, it got a bed in it. And then somebody, somebody asked, well, how do you know? They ask you where you sleep. Like I sleep at a truck stop most of the time. And they'll be like, well, how do you know where all the truck stops are at? Do they have like a list or something? Or like a, like a, all truck drivers have like a certain book that they have to know where the truck stops are at? I've, I've been asked that question before many times. No, we don't have a list. We don't have some magical, some magical list that all truck, all that they give all the truck drivers. They do give you something in orientation at PNS. I think it's like a loves. They give you a loves one and like a TA or something. They do give it to you, and it tells you. It does tell you where truck stops are at, like on the interstates. I don't know where it's at, but I got it in my truck somewhere. But what a lot of people don't know is there's an app. This video is sponsored by this app, Trucker Path. I'm pretty sure y'all, all y'all really know, all y'all that's been driving, y'all know what Trucker Path is. 
Trucker Pav, I use it every day. Every day I use Trucker Pav. I want to know where the rest area is at. I want to know what restaurants they have at the truck stops. I want to know how many spots are at the truck stops. I want to know how far away I am from the truck stop. Especially when uh, when you're down to your last hour, look up somewhere to park. Yeah, use Trucker Pav. Like right now, I'm, I'm spot on at a pilot. I don't really look at the, I do look at what it says, lots of spots, some spots, a lot is full. I really don't look at that too much because what I mainly look at is how many spots are at the truck stop. If the truck stop has a hundred spots, but the app says a lot is full, then I'm gonna take my chance to pull up anyway. But Trucker Path also has a gold package that you can get, gold package or diamond package. Gold package, truck routing, turn by turn, parking prediction, wait station prediction, no ads, night mode, badge, offline maps, more services. A lot of cool features on this Trucker Path app. Turn by turn, I guess that will come in handy when you go some places and your GPS might go out. Because I have had my RAM and now they go out before. But uh, most of the times when I get close to my shipper or receiver, I'm using... Um, Google Maps when I get close and I, I pretty much got an idea like Google Maps are pretty much line up with it and you can just uh, hey at your own discretion you know you still got to be aware of your surroundings you know if you got a street where you like especially when you got to make a right turn and you got to make like a quick left the truck GPS might not keep up with it but at Google Maps you run both of them at the same time and it's a little safer that's, that's how I do it that's how the new school drivers do it. Y'all old school truckers that still live by your Atlas. I don't know what to say about y'all, but me, I'm gonna use technology. I'm gonna use technology. What y'all think? I'm about to get some fuel real quick. Yes, I'm sitting on the fuel island, but this truck's not right here. I got a couple spots open right beside me. Ain't too bad. I'm about to get some fuel. I got an hour 45 left on my clock. I'm about to keep the pipe lit. Get this thing on up to New York City, man. Flatbed gang. Till next time, I'm out.